here's something interesting I found. Uh, there's a summer sloop that's pinging right here. Look over here. But it doesn't exist. But you can hear it. And I can't seem to select it or anything. And the Dune Desert has no caves. And I've never found a summer sloop here in the past. But I have also never really hunted them down before because they were useless. What I think happened is one of them is misplaced underground. Or not, and there is a cave there. In fact, I think it might be the only cave in the entire biome. I guess that does confirm two trends. So, there are indeed now caves in the Dune Desert. This bleeding temple helps a resident song. Play for us. Hello, world. How nostalgic. In the beginning, there were the words, and the words made the world. I see you have been doing research. I must say you make for interesting conversation. Conversation. Singing together. Communication. Our chin was only plug at the strings of the tapestry. Are you saying this is only the beginning? In the beginning, there were the words, and the words made the world. The words turned into song over the windows. The song played with instruments weave the tapestry. A tapestry of temples and shrines, bodies and bones, orchestral harmony, us, we, ours. You know what this line reminds me of? Like the words made the words or whatever the heck? It reminds me of that line. The same thing for the temples kind of make it fit more. It reminds me of going out of bounds in the original Talos Principle game. In the beginning were the words and the words made the world. I am the words. The words are everything. Where the words end, the world ends. You cannot go forward in an absence of space. Repeat. Because it goes on a spiel about words and it's making me remember that. Anyway, in case this does become its own video, uh, yeah, we're out here exploring uh, this. Well, the goal was the Spire Coast. I kind of took a detour. From my previous experiences, which I can put on screen, I'm not super duper interested in going there again. <laughs> Last thing I remember from coming here was two radioactive doofuses at the same time. Uh, and as a reminder, we have obviously not reached nuclear yet, so we have weaponry to kill them, we do not have weaponry to survive them. What's that? Oh, those are just not properly rendered in trees, okay. They look so weird. They look like giant versions of the bacon. Well, probably not anymore, because the bacon model changed. Didn't it? I think it changed, right? Do I even have any in here? No, I don't. Unless we do what I'm kind of tempted to do, which is go around this way. You good, Mr. Bean? Are you trying to defy the laws of physics here? Walk in without moving your legs, pulling a Michael Jackson? Why are there so many of you around here? Is like the spider ghost meant to be like a bean spawner? Cause now that I think about it, I've seen a suspicious amount of beans in the spider ghost. As far as I'm aware, there's still no caves in the spider ghost or dune desert. I say that with the irony of having found a cave just before in the dune desert, but like. I'm fairly confident that one was already there in the game before. The first one's a summer sloop, which is going to be interesting. Time for a new melody. Yes, actually, this might be a strange question, but it could give me invaluable insight. What, according to you, is the shape of our universe? Which is a 
I should have waited with this question. I mean, it's still a decent question. You know, they do say no question's a stupid question. What does this need? Nothing, apparently. This was a hard drive that was added later on into the game, actually. Like, now that I think about it, this hard drive was not here when uh, in update 6. And I know that for a fact. Because I built my base here. It was right on top of this hill, which is why I'm approaching it from this side. So it's a little bit more familiar to me. Underestimate the power of a single cosmic ray, flipping the right bit at the wrong time. Hey, yeah, that's just complaining about underestimating the destruction power that caused the drop pods to basically destroy themselves. Alright, I'm just gonna head back and probably try to continue the storage room at this point. Last night I hopped on and finally set up crystal oscillator automation, which took a considerable amount of time. This is making 10 crystal oscillators per minute, and it's uh, running off of all of this stuff. I'm not even going to try and tell you what all is here or any of the numbers, because truth is I don't remember, as well as just some quartz on its own. This is part of the old system, so this is kind of irrelevant. Uh, so now we have crystal oscillators as well as quartz crystal, yeah it's called quartz crystal, automated and ready to be transported up to the storage room. Also, if I sound weird, I'm sick for the like fourth time in the series so far. I don't even know how that's possible, but whatever. Today, or I should say this morning, I got on and I put down a lot of the machines for another project, which is heavy modular frames. Five per minute to be exact once it's done. Uh, this, all the recipes, or at least most of the recipes, should be set, if not all. And now we just have to get the resources. In fact, this thing is... If we do the belt work, this thing is basically done. Uh, the only thing that's going to be problematic is coal. This needs, I think, 450 coal per minute. This amount of steel. And there is no coal left. This node's used up, this node's used up on steel, this is coal power, so I could probably recycle it. This is all used up, there's no getting anything else from there. So we're kind of at a standstill. One nice thing is I believe there is coal over here somewhere. So. That would be the next closest coal, all the way out here. Because the main reason I don't want to get rid of the one down there, that's powering our original coal plant, is... Even though I haven't been overclocking, like the whole crystal oscillator factory, as I forgot to mention, is not overclocked. And that is because, once we have the power grid, if we need more crystal oscillators, I want to be able to just throw overclock shards and everything and call it a day. And it'll just go up to 25 per minute, I think it'll be, instead of 10. Uh, so we're taking less of a big dent on power here. But we still have 20,000 capacity. After this, it'll... We'll probably be at... I wouldn't be surprised, 1300 megawatts. Add high-speed connectors, computers, circuit boards, and AI limiters to that. And we're not gonna have much power left here. Uh, so we're gonna have to get into turbo fuel soon enough. I guess step number one is going to be to get the coal, because that's going to be the hardest thing. Uh, other than coal, the only other real challenging thing, I already hooked up the limestone, so the 450 per minute limestone is done. Uh, other than coal, we'll need 1200 iron per minute, I want to say, or something around that. Uh, and that's not going to be as much of a problem, because... There are like eight impure nodes here, like two or I don't know, but there's like eight around this area. And 
we can use those just overclocked and try and extract the most out of those so that won't be a problem it's mostly just coal that's an issue the limestone sorted out the, the iron is easy it's just getting the coal sorted out which is hard still though surprised that I missed that since I've been hunting these down there's literally nothing protect odd Well, I say that. I said that last versus sphere I collected, and then I got jumped by a spider. Which. I mean, it's not like it was a bad jump. It just kind of appeared out of nowhere. How many do we need? Uh, I can't remember. No, we need two, right? Yeah, because we have Mark II miners. So, when we get Mark III miners, we'll only need one for this factory, but. For now, we're going to need to use two of these nodes. This couldn't be any more perfect. These eight impure nodes make the exact number of iron we need when the Mark II miners are overclocked. It makes the exact amount. A belt of 450 and a belt of 750. Alright, we got steel up and going. Now it's gonna have to, it's gonna like obviously have to fill up and it's gonna take a little bit, but uh, the steel ingots are up and going now. Once they fill up, as I just said. Uh, now that's going to start up the production for steel beams and pipes. The production for concrete has already been going because I hooked up the limestone earlier, aka this morning. Which means, if I can find where the limestone starts, the first thing we're going to have to bring is we're going to have to bring the limestone out this way. Uh, now the assemblers start right here. We need to make encased industrial beams, which takes steel beams and concrete. The concrete is here, the steel beams are a bit further down. So now we have to split this. Alright, boom, that should be steel hooked up, which means in case in steel beams, yep, it should start up production. Uh, now these go where? This is reinforced plates. I think they go directly to the manufacturer, which I don't think I have put down yet. I guess we'll throw it in the corner over here, so it's with the other manufacturers. Alright, so that's going to be making heavy modular frames, and I'm going to overclock it just so I don't need three of these. Yeah, the encased industrial beams do seem to go here and only here. Okay, next we need to probably sort out the plates and rods so we can then sort out the screws so we can then sort out the reinforced plates so then we can do the modular frames so then we can do the heavy modular frames. Boom! That should, in theory, the iron ingots hooked up. Now obviously um, we don't have 750 per minute going through these belts so it's not going to be fully efficient on the iron but that's something to work on later when we get Mark V belts. And I'll have to take, I'll have to make notes of which one. There's this one, I know there's part of the stator motor factory, there's also the screw factory for the basic automation. Those are the main three I still know of but I'm sure uh, there will be more, so we'll probably have an entire de episode dedicated to just upgrading to Mark III miners and merging different factories together. Because I feel like inevitably that's going to have to happen if we want to be resource efficient with the nodes. Because especially around here, the nodes get pretty scarce. Like, I think we're out of iron now, basically, almost. We're almost out of close-by iron. I think we're out of close-by limestone, and we're... Oh great, I didn't even scan for iron because I swapped it to limestone too fast. Yeah, we have like a bit of iron. We have plenty of copper, but like still plenty is two nodes. We have one impure limestone node, two impure copper nodes, and two impure iron nodes. And we're completely out of basic resources. I think all the screws are ready. I just have to belt all of them now and I think we're almost done. Uh, now the screw belt work is going to be quite a pain because I'm going to have to figure out how to get 11.25 constructors worth of screws. 
And what I mean by that is that 450 does not divide by 40, meaning one of the... We're gonna have to figure out how to make that work, and I'm not sure how to do it. In theory, that should just work, right? Because then what I can do after is just go this way back into the normal merger loop. And the 10 will figure its way out, and the 30 will figure its way that way eventually when things start backlogging, because that's basically the entire energy of manifolding. This is what a thousand hours of manifolding looks like. As easy as that. Okay, I think that's basically everything. The modular frames are gonna start up here slowly. We got screws, we got steel pipes. Uh, the encased industrial beams are done, however they have to be belted over, just like the modular frames, which is what we're about to do. I think we're done with this project. Finally, after quite a while. It's a bit unfortunate that you don't need heavy modular frames anymore, so this factory is going to be pretty useless for the rest of uh, this phase, because we don't actually need them, like, at all. Uh, unless they're required for the modular engine and uh, whatever the other space elevator part is, we don't actually need heavy modular frames anymore, because they basically got phased out for being too expensive. Like, I don't blame them for getting rid of heavy modular frames because they are challenging and challenging by design to be fair. Uh, but some recipes don't make sense using normal modular frames instead of heavy modular frames. I still disagree with the change for trains. I think unless you bring trains down a tier, down into tier, what is it, 4? I think trains should have stayed with heavy modular frames. I think trains should be expensive, because they shouldn't be used for anything that isn't long distance travel. The thing with trains is, once you have that out of the gate cost, it just takes power. So reducing the cost of the train itself, I feel like it's kind of just dumb. I don't know, maybe it's just me. But I think heavy modular frames shouldn't have been the thing to have removed. It should have been either brought up... You know, I'm not even gonna try and like make a decision on where it should have been moved. But I don't think making the trains cheaper was the right move. Anyway, I'm gonna stop yapping about trains and uh, probably try and uh, get this stuff to its correct locations. I don't know why I'm routing heavy modular frames over here since they need to go on the other side over here. Uh, but yeah, I'll figure it out. The thing is, we're still missing some stuff. I put stuff- I put basically everything we still need to automate on the signs. Like, I said I would do screws with the crystal oscillators, and then I didn't. Uh, so we still have to automate screws. <laughs> However, everything other than screws in the basic automation is done. Like, truth is, I'll have to do screws eventually. <laughs> I feel like I can't keep getting away with this. There's definitely going to be a point where I need a billion screws and I don't feel like manually crafting them. Except I kind of like having to manually craft screws because it kind of runs with the, the joke that this entire game is a screw crafting simulator. Because truth is, like 20% of the game is you manually crafting screws. So I don't blame people for calling it that. In fact, I often end up calling it that myself. That's kind of a meme. And also, if, in case I didn't show this off already, you can... Uh, do that, and it, the conveyor lifts will still work, so. Here's a tip for you compact builders, or wannabe compact builders. Uh, conveyor lifts are very abusable. 
So do with what you might with that info. Just watching the holy crystal oscillator migration of 2024. Unless this video comes out and it's already 2025 because I'm not exactly a fast editor. Holy cow, we have 2,000 of these already? I mean, I know it's not that much because I use 5 per wall. And when I say 5 per wall, I mean 5 per segment like this. And when you're talking a scale like that, that's not that many. But like 2,000 at 10 per minute in less than a day? I've played for maybe 4 hours at most since making this farm. Also, if you're curious why I put industrial storage containers here as well, uh, that's mostly because crystal oscillators are very good for awesome sinking. And obviously one of the achievements is the golden Dutch statue, which is a thousand coupons. So we're gonna have to be pretty hard on the fix-it coupons, as well as the cyber wagon or whatever is another achievement, so the discount cyber truck. That's also for fix-it coupons, and that's also an achievement. My conversion factory is still definitely one of my favorite builds I've done yet. Might be because it's new, but also I think it's the fact that it's the only factory I've really built in a long time. That isn't just built, and then it just sits there never to be seen again. I regularly use this thing. I, in fact, I've been using it right now. I just converted a few alien carapaces. Uh, and if you're wondering why I'm just sitting around yapping, it's because I've been waiting on encased industrial beams. They take forever. On top of that, these lifts, it takes like 600 per lift. I will say though, all the lights on the conveyor belts from up here look absolutely insane. Nighttime in this game, even though it's kind of been going downhill, is still insane. I love this. You kind of lose this effect when you start lighting things up with actual lights, which we will have to do eventually, unfortunately, but hey, at least it looks hella good right now, I can tell you that much, and now it's, it's especially noticeable when further away, which I like. Alright, and with that, the quartz crystal should now be able to get to the storage. Uh, we will have to figure out heavy modular frames, uh, it's on this side somewhere. Uh, once that's done, we'll need computers and, you know, the stuff that I've said probably 40 times now. I'm just not gonna bother yapping about it again. So, today we got heavy modular frames automated. Last night I got crystal oscillators automated on my own time. I'd say this was a pretty productive episode. Crystal oscillators and heavy modular frames. Probably two of the hardest things to automate at this point in the game. I'd say that went pretty well.